Oh, hello there, and welcome back to the Agostino Zinger Show with me, your host, Agostino Zinger, and this is episode number 419. That's 419. That's 419. How are you guys doing? How are you guys feeling? Great, amazing, good to hear. If it's your first time checking out the show via YouTube, make sure you smash that like button, hit subscribe, and of course, turn on that notification bell and leave me a comment down below with any of your thoughts and feelings. If you're listening via the podcast app, a five star review and a nice little share will help me go a long way. And of course, if you want to support the show via Patreon, you're more than welcome to at patreon.com for slash Agostino. That's patreon.com for slash A G O S T I N H O. For as little as $1 per month, you get access to one bonus episode of the Agostino Zinger Show per month directly on the Patreon platform. Um, you can support the show for as little as $1, for as high as $20, depending on what tier you want to get on there. So definitely make sure, get involved. I'm going to be uploading um, Patreon only content there, a little bit more X rated, let's say. Um, content and topics that I can't obviously talk about on YouTube or something I might get my channel nuked so if you want to see some of that come and join us over at Patreon that's patreon.com for slash Agostino that's patreon.com for slash A-G-O-S-T-I-N-H-O don't delay get on it today so how you guys doing good amazing great um I guess if you're in the states you're probably not feeling the best let me just make sure I lower this a little bit because the camera's a bit high yeah good yeah um if you're in the states you're probably not feeling the best right now I would imagine you're probably not in the best of mood, probably, um, especially if you're living in the state of Georgia, because it's going down there. It's going down like Donkey Kong. It's going absolutely. Um, what a way to start the year, isn't it? We had the unfortunate news about Dr. Dre and supposedly he's getting better now he's on the mend, even though, you know, I felt like that news was a bit rushed. You had, um, I forgot her name, but the former Bond villain. So one of the former Bond ladies that was in that 70s show, she somehow managed to die twice um, or two times over the past couple of days. You know, I think they prematurely announced her passing and then it was kind of, you know, um, uh, denied by the camp. And then it was obviously then reiterated again by the camp, like loads of miscommunication. And now we have this um, election taking place in Georgia. I'm guessing it's the last stomping ground for Trump to maybe decide, maybe figure out if he can um, overturn the election um with his loss to joe biden and it's just all kicking off it's completely kicked off and this might be um inevitable consequence of trump's presidency i think from the outside looking in again i'm not a big big in politics but from what i've seen looking from the outside looking in he hasn't really achieved much right even the things that he kind of takes credit for he didn't necessarily do he sort of just took them over the finishing line fair enough that's one part of politics but you know he's probably over inflating his influence in that regard but he seems to have a really um he seems to have like more so than anyone i've ever seen in my life maybe outside of maybe barack obama in recent years even George Bush back in the day, right? Though I still felt there's a lot of Republicans and conservatives who were, you know, pretty quick to laugh at him when he made a mistake or to call out some of his errors. But for some reason, Trump's supporters are just as much ride or die as his detractors. That's a very interesting part to look at. There's no one that's ever, I don't know if you're ever going to meet somebody, especially in the States with his politics or follows it closely, who's going to be in the middle who's going to sit on the fence. They've, they've either got a very strong opinion about him or a very bad opinion, strong, strong in the positive and bad, of course, in the negative. Um, and I guess with that, with those two fanatical ends or one of, of the spectrum, you're never going to get anywhere. There's never going to be any sort of, um, nothing good can come out of that, right? Even when he does something right, the people that hate him are never going to give him credit. Whenever he does something wrong, the people that love him are never going to call him out. So he's kind of in this weird position where he's probably one of the only, if not the only position I've seen in my entire life in Western democracy, that's basically above reproach. Because anything that he does wrong, his base will just prop him up and say, nah, you don't get it, it's part of a grand plan. And then anything he does right, his detractors will be like, nah, he didn't actually do that, it's X, Y, Z, whatever, do you know what I mean? It's such an odd, odd, odd situation to be in. Part of me thought, in the beginning, right, that he was a necessary evil, or he was like, um, you know when you, like, that's why sometimes I'm not that critical, or I don't try and get too much on the back of people like Boris Johnson, because I sometimes do believe in the adage that you get the leadership you deserve and i think as a nation 
as a country, as a democracy, as part of the Western world that we live in. We sometimes overlook certain things. We don't engage politically. We don't engage socially. We don't really keep our eye on the ball. And when these election elections come around, we don't have many people to choose from. We love to blame the machine. And sometimes I think, yes, as broken as the machine is, I do think there's a lot that we can do as as citizens right to basically put people in power who are going to serve our best interests as best as you know as much as they can um we definitely can do that we definitely can affect that sort of change but we probably don't do it because we're citizens and we have other things to worry about right we've got to pay our taxes keep our kids fed and clothed live in a warm home um you know uh chasing our careers chasing love whatever recreational stuff we have so many things going on in our normal day-to-day that it takes too much of your time if you've got a job again because people that are going to these protests i don't know if they even work of course with covid it's a bit difficult but if you're not permanently employed by protesting then you're more than likely going to pay a you know cursory glance at what goes on in politics you're not going to be super super engaged you're going to just you know you're going to keep an eye out your corner of your eye and i think that usually hurts us in the long run because what we end up having we end up being put in a position where we're left with no real good option because if you think about it there should have never been there should have never been a position or a time they should we should america should have never been in a position where the democratic candidates that were opposing trump were joe biden and kamala harris that should have never happened right bernie sanders all these other people that came before him people even like andrew yang should have been the people that they propped up democratic Party at least um to sort of combat him or to debate him or to offer up as another solution so that when it went to the elections because i think part of me thinks if if bernie sanders was on the ticket instead and it happened to be that he won by a squeaky margin i don't think it would have been received as hostile as hostile uh, as as hostile as it's been received yeah whatever that word is i don't think it would have been received as bad as it's been received now i think part of the reason is because the republicans saw that democrats rigged their own election in their own party and of course they spent the last four years not doing anything to mend the bridges and to kind of work together with trump don't get me wrong maybe he's not the best person to even try to work together with but they haven't even tried to kind of you know pull out an olive branch it's just been an adversarial sort of relationship from the minute one to zero it makes complete sense that somebody like trump who's you know a narcissist you know in the extreme who kind of is you know above reproach doesn't really even take responsibility doesn't lead in the kind of conventional sense would take would see this as a reason to justify the fact that he thinks the election has been rigged because i generally do think in his head he believes that for sure like the same way i said about boris and the covid response as ever, much as everyone's been saying oh they're crazy and what they're doing i think they generally think they're doing they're doing a good job i think trump thinks that he's standing up for his values he's standing up for his base he's fighting for things that he knows no one's ever gonna fight for him for because you know look what we've seen so far william barr's left him supposedly pence has changed his bloody banner image on his twitter page and unfollowed trump on twitter so i can definitely understand why he thinks you know what i'm gonna take this whole ship down because no one's fighting for me the way i'm gonna fight no one will fight for me the way i'm gonna fight for me but the damage he's causing the damage he's causing in the long term is just you 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 worry it's like you think about the damage that was caused let's say let's take an obvious thing right let's think of the, of the twin towers you think about the damage that was caused to parts of the middle east um relations with the u.s and foreign countries um the lives that were lost off the back of it just from the twin towers right the, uh, just from 9 11 look at the kind of collateral damage that came off the back of it what do you reckon this four years of just complete chaos right on the streets um you know in the white house senate floor what do you think that's going to be like what do you think the you know the waves the ripple effects of that are going to be they're going to be so long lasting especially now that you know it looks like what they've won a senate majority republic the democrats in the senate um they've now obviously got more leeway in that regard you've got the rise of all the kind of um what they called the gang the mob whatever those girls are aoc and all those girls who are you know comp- if they, they couldn't be more you know opposing parties you know you think about it in terms of bringing their sort of socialist agenda in, into play there's so many kind of like fiery touch points still on the horizon that it feels like it's going to be a real scary time for the next three or four years especially after with, with covid in the air right for the most part, COVID in America seems to have not really existed. You see all these influencers flying around the place, going to party. You see polit- you see um, politicians telling people to stay indoors and then getting caught, going to their golf, golf um, resort somewhere. 
it's a complete shit show of a situation from the start to the finish. Um, or from start to now, actually, not even finish, not knowing it's a finish. And it's getting even worse, obviously, with the scenes that um, were on display earlier on today. This is from BBC News. It says, Biden blasts Trump supporters siege of the Capitol. And Biden's response too was super weak, man. It's like, leadership is, maybe it's like, um, it's not like an over, it's not like I'm eulogizing um, capitalism or anything, but why is it like private companies? I guess maybe because of the occupation itself, right? No one that's really, um, no one that's, um, no one that has any sort of brain or nobody that's competent is ever going to go into politics, isn't it? They're obviously going to go try and earn as much money as they can in the private sector. You're not going to ever try and become a public official. That makes no sense. But Jesus, the people that we have to choose from, man. Like Biden comes out and gives like a lukewarm response. Like as, there was a moment there for him to kind of, you know, take the mantle and kind of show a bit of leadership, condemn things. And he just comes out with this wishy-washy thing. He looked like he was half asleep. They had to probably pull his face back to get him to talk properly. Give him a, you know, I don't know. Anyway, let's continue. But Biden blasts Trump supporters siege of the Capitol. This is the following. US President elect Joe Biden has blasted the insur insurrection of pro Trump rioters who stormed the US Capitol that he demanded an end of the end of the siege. The Democrat called um on the outgoing President Trump to set up and repudiate their violence, to step up to repudiate the violence. In a tweeted video, Mr. Trump repeated um debunked claims that the vote was stolen, but urged protesters to go home. <laughs> it's the best it's like the best non it's like the best non-directive ever go home but the, the election was stolen don't do anything bad but i'm super angry it's just what a joint session of congress confirming electoral college votes has been suspended and forced into recess the protesters fought their way past police to breach the u.s capitol shouting and waving pro-Trump and US flags as they roam through the halls demanding the results of the presidential election to be overturned. Great way to do that, by the way. The invasion sent members of the Congress scrambling forever under the seats and cowering and donning gas masks as they tear uh, gas was fired in the Capitol Rotunda. That was quite cool to see, though, that they have this like secret passageway, railway system underneath the Capitol uh, building that they kind of escort all the politicians in, which is quite interesting. And they gave them these little weird plasticky face mask thing. A woman who was shot during a riot has died, right? The woman died. And that, I think, is where it ends, really, in terms of understanding who's right or wrong, right? You, fair enough. Trump uses whatever you can. Like, I, I don't agree with his tactics, but, you know, whatever. Use what you can to kind of get your message out there. But when a regular, schmegular person dies, um, you know, in pursuit of what? An overturning of election that's never going to happen? These people hate him. They hate everything he represents. They hate the people that support him. If ever there were going, if ever there was a person that wouldn't get any benefit of the doubt, it's going to be Trump. Especially with you know lackluster so far evidence of vote. You know for sure. Do people think that elections can't be rigged? You're you're insane. Of course elections can be rigged. We know that anything can be rigged. Anything can be fixed. But the way he's going about it is just like God damn man. God damn it. Um. And then, of course, the videos are even worse themselves, right? This is the actual video itself of the lady getting shot. Yeah, obviously, you can hear the gunshot there. I'm going to actually mute the video, so I don't want to get taken off anywhere. Um, she falls to the ground. And I guess at that moment, no one actually knew that she died. I mean, people just assumed that she just got shot in the neck. But, you know, getting shot in the neck that close range... Um, looked like she was trying to climb through a window of a door that was locked and whoever's on the other end decided to shoot which again should you be shooting at that end of the thing i don't know it kind of goes back to the whole who's that guy is it joseph joshua blake whatever the black dude that got shot in the back and he's paralyzed um sometimes you wonder like what kind of use of force is that like that do you really need to shoot somebody dead in the neck when they're jumping through a window of a door like i don't know did she have any weapons in her hands could they see from that far i don't know but there surely is another way to mobilize somebody um especially considering everything that's going on because you know for sure there's loads of civilians in there right that are obviously you know just there to document it and put it on their irl stream the last thing you want is to accidentally hit somebody but yeah look like she got hit of course monumental fuck up there and then imagine in the midst of all that then trump comes out and probably puts out quite possibly one of the worst 
YouTuber apologies I've ever seen in my entire life. Um, somebody re-uploaded it, but Twitter eventually took it down because all the, you know, um, most people, I guess, on the left and the right came out and basically condemned him. It's a one of the rare, rare moments on my timeline because I, I do go out of my way to try and follow as many people from either side of the political divide. And it's one of the rare moments I saw everyone united. They were all quote tweeting this video and just basically saying that this is a joke. What the hell are you doing? Somebody has died, isn't it? So I guess the death was enough. Everyone's okay with protesting, even though you shouldn't be protesting Capitol building. You know, of course it's a sacred building probably you know treat with some level of respect blah de, blah 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 but for the most part no one cares right burn a few chairs you know ch ch chuck a few plinths through a window it is what it is but when somebody dies off the back of this you just that's when you've gone too far so trump puts out one of the worst youtubers of uh, apologies i've ever seen it's, it's right up there one of the worst stuff you'll see from like a nikita dragon a, you know a trisha pater it's a flipping tana mogo right i mean those kind of high level like high octane full of bullshit not taking any responsibility sort of like null apologies and this is what trump had to say off the back of it like pretty heinous i know your pain i know you're hurt we had an election that was stolen from us. It was a landslide election, and everyone knows it, especially the other side. But you have to go home now. We have to have peace. We have to have law and order. We have to respect our great people in law and order. We don't want anybody hurt. It's a very tough period of time. There's never been a time like this where such a thing happened where they could take it away from Jesus all of us, Christ, from man. me, from you, from our country. <laughs> this was a fraudulent election, but we can't play into the hands of these people. We have to have peace. So go home. We love you. You're very special. Jesus Christ. You've seen what happens. You see the way others are treated that are so bad and so evil. I know how you feel. He, he, he might be one of the worst communicators of all time. And it's very odd to see because you see footage of him from the past when he was younger. He's very clear, um, somewhat charismatic. He, don't get, he can have his charming moments sometimes, but when in moments like this, you would imagine that he'd have some sort of like humane side of him that would just come out and be like, you know what, this has gone too far. Again, no one's telling you to, you know, um, stop demanding a recount of the votes. Do whatever you have to do until you get, you know, chucked out of the White House. It is what it is. The game is a game. People already are, are already conditioned or accept the way he is. I think for the most part, I think no one was kind of, well, no one really sensible thought he was ever going to concede peacefully. So everyone's okay with him, you know, contesting it until the last moment. But you would imagine at this time, at this point, he'd be like, you know what? let's just chill a little bit but he doesn't he just if anything he kind of ramps him up a bit more which is weird um it might be a, it might be like a it might be um the, the reason might be because within his own sort of like you know within his own group of people his people close to him they're probably already starting to pull away so he's starting to feel a little bit isolated and because you do get a sense whenever he feels like he's the only one sticking up for a certain thing, he tends to go super hard. Whenever he's got people around him, he tends to kind of lay down with, you know, kind of relax a little bit. So maybe because he feels alone and he doesn't feel anybody else is fighting for him. Um, he's just going to, you know, he's going to double down on whoever he sees kind of backing him up. That's probably why you saw him give the Medal of Honor to that David Nunes guy, right? Because he's been ride or die since the beginning of the Trump uh, presidency. He's never wavered. Um, the other guy that wrestles, um, Jim Jordan, whatever, right? He's Those guys are kind of his dudes. They've never wavered. They've always been on the train. And then, you know, um, and obviously with the Mike Pence kind of pulling away from him, maybe that sort of changed things. But it's just such a like bad video to put out when people are protesting and dying on the streets isn't it and then of course now i think as of what an hour ago um the police have i think from what i can see have kind of gained control of the situation from what i can see here from this guy called um bg on the scene he kind of is a great follow on to, uh, to follow all these things and find out what's going on he's always doing great um live streams of the events and i guess he's, he does irl stuff and then somehow has the ability to clip them up all on the road and upload them very quickly so big up to him so there's a video here of the crowd is pushed back further as the police uh, secure the U.S. Capitol lawn out in front shortly before 6 p.m. curfew. So they've got all the kind of police out in their riot gear with batons pushing everyone back from the Capitol building, which is pretty cool. So that's probably a little bit under control. And then you've got a video here of more protesters. Oh, more police, sorry. Whoops. <laughs> Posting people away. 
Then you've got here, this video said crowds are dispersing after large amounts of tear gas were deployed in the front of the Capitol building. Still several hundreds of people on the lawn at 5.30. That's um, about 5.30 p.m. here. They just released massive amounts of tear gas. Cool. You got another video, police fire tear gas into the building. So this is when they were taking them all out. So this is pretty cool. So it looks like it's obviously dying down somewhat. People aren't necessarily in there as they were prior. But God almighty, man, what an absolute shit show of a situation, isn't it? And you got all these people, none of them have been, looks like, I don't think they've been mass arrest. I haven't seen the scenes I saw in the beginning, like at the start of BLM, especially in New York, where the police were legitimately just beating up any protest they could get hold of. That was kind of stepping one meter out of line. So it's been quite clear. It's quite, quite funny to see the complete difference in treatment um when it comes to sort of protests now don't get me wrong maybe the people on the ground can say oh no but we're not being as violent as the blm guys and there's not a lot of because i think a lot of blm stuff some of the violence as well had to do with you know there's a lot of back and forth between the antifa crowd and all that malarkey it gets a bit weird isn't it there's all these different little factions and then the proud boys came out of nowhere it's just odd so maybe because everyone was unified um, underneath this one banner of oh let's get trump let's get this trump um election or let's get this election overruled it kind of made for a much peacefuler sort of protest because to be honest i didn't see much violence i didn't see people punching each other i saw obviously you know barging through barricades and smashing windows but i didn't see much hitting and striking as i much as i might have saw in the blm protest again just to look outside looking in but god almighty man the difference in treatment though you you sometimes you think to yourself like if this was a horde of like i don't know those kind of new age black panthers that wear like you know cool clothes and shit what would happen i don't think it would end this way i really don't man there's so many weapons out there like and again this is the sad part of it right all these people that go and rile these people up the ones that are online making videos and you know making weird twitter accounts and shit they're not the ones on the actual ground it's just regular civilians that have kind of you know i guess your this is your one outlet to kind of voice your frustration so you're kind of doing it um in any way you can you've, you're kind of you feel like you've been abandoned you've been left out especially with covid loads of small businesses have been kind of scuppered and taken you know and basically overlooked um you kind of feel like your voice has been forgotten so when these guys these political peers pundits are sort of riling you up and getting you to be active out there that's all well and good but then when you're actually putting yourself on the front line and again that lady that got shot none of these guys are going to pay are going to pay for your medical bills again if you're if you're injured if you're alive but none of them are going to look after a family and these people are going to do jack shit for that person you're just going to be forgotten about do you know what i mean so that's the problem as well i have with it these guys love to rile up their bases but they don't do anything for them when they're really in the shits and they're really dispensable they, they, the odd thing is the people on the ground are dispensable to the politicians and to the people that are riling them up everyone's taking advantage of them like everybody bloody hell man but yeah an absolute shock of a situation actually from what i've seen online again some mad shocking pictures of what's going on over there everyone's basically in the shit isn't it everyone's in the shit mate look at that press hang the wave this this is an image of white privilege if ever you've seen one just try and replace that with a picture of some kid from you know i don't know atlanta carrying that plinth and waving like that it'd be a whole different situation i don't think you'd be able to walk out in that way i, I doubt they walked out with it probably probably got apprehended at the door but still an incredible sign of privilege you got this wild lad in this weird suit he looks like something jamaica i would wear um you've got guys in complete head-to-toe tactical wear where this is odd just so, america is such an interesting place isn't it very, very interesting but again this is definitely a reaction this this kind of feels like a reaction to covid more so than it does to the election it definitely does i, I don't know how i don't know if I, I, i've got a feeling this wouldn't be that much of a problem if there wasn't if there wasn't such a shit show it dealt with earlier with covid with how they responded to it you know and this is again from the trump presidency too not really effective in any sort of way numbers are still soaring states doing things completely differently to other states and the ones that have kept their states open are basically being demonized by all parts of the press um you know it's just a weird place to be in isn't it like no support what's the relief have they, have they thought that a stimulus package i don't think they've seen that stimulus checks yet this is obviously trump talking prior kind of you know riling up everybody you are going to Walk down Pennsylvania Avenue, I love Pennsylvania Avenue, and we're going to the Capitol, and we're going to try and give, you know, the Democrats are hopeless, they're never voting for anything. Not even one vote. 
but we're going to try and give our Republicans the weak ones, because the strong ones don't need any of our help. We're tr going to try and give them the kind of pride and boldness that they need to take back our country. So let's walk down Pennsylvania Avenue. I want to thank you all. God bless you, and God bless America. Thank you all for being here. This is incredible. Thank you very much. Weird guy in it. Only look after I. Only looking after I. But again, that's where we are, isn't it? That's where we are. And um, yeah, like I said, a person died, man. A person died. A young lady died, shot in the neck, uh, trying to, I guess, what appease Trump, trying to um, reverse the election. That's never going to get reversed. No matter, even if there was evidence, they would never reverse it. They hate the guy too much, and essentially, her life has been wasted for nothing, for nothing. Family destroyed. A loss of a sister, a daughter, a wife, a, a girlfriend, whatever, a colleague, um, off the back of this nonsense. And I think, I don't know, to, both parties have to, have to take some amount of the blame for it. But Trump, especially being the leader, especially during a transition, you'd imagine like, hey, I don't know, man. Interesting dude, interesting dude, interesting dude. But yeah, hopefully everyone's safe and um, back home now. I'm assuming they are. And um, people can kind of... Uh, chill out a little bit take a deep breath and hopefully get back to some level some semblance of normality hopefully 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 anyway so next to kind of be a bit of a palate cleanser because that was a bit much to come in from the top in it it's coming from the top um what i was thinking about yes yeah, so new year's resolutions um i haven't been uh, in the last few years i say maybe two years i haven't necessarily done as many as i did in the past when i was when i was first getting into the whole like um uh what's that what, what would you call it self-improvement field or things i'll do a lot of these little kind of mini projects and challenges and plans and stuff so i always kind of looked forward to the new year as a time to sort of reset and start again basically you know you do the soap you do like a dry january you would obviously incorporate that with a really high octane fitness regime loads of extracurricular stuff like learning a language reading a book writing something like there will be all these things that are kind of meant to kind of keep my mind active um and obviously um also ensure that you do you kind of pull away the other stuff like you know maybe too many computers games playing with on the internet social media blah 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 but i guess as i've kind of gone into a bit of my groove inside to those things became habits and not things i kind of had to do in the new year's i sort of kind of put the new year's goals to one side but this year especially off the back of covid it seems like the perfect time to maybe revisit some of those things and kind of realign myself because you know as i'm assuming most of you have kind of gone through a bit of a rough year um we're probably going to go through a, a rougher year this year so I need to sort of fortify my mind, body and soul so that I am best equipped to deal with whatever comes at my at, along my way in it during this journey. And I think we all have to kind of do similar sort of things. So my plan is to number one, address my weight. I've kind of fluctuated up and down. I think before lockdown, I was probably at like 220 pounds. Now I've ballooned up to fucking 277 last time I weighed myself. So the plan is to get myself down to 200 pounds. That's going to basically losing 70 pounds between now and what's, I say six months. I can do that pretty easily. I've done it plenty of times before. I think the lowest I got down to was like 180 pounds, um, which was, you know, pretty good but i'd probably be able to maintain 190 to 210 but i plan it to get down from 277 to 200 pounds at the end of this lockdown and then i guess the other goal that i had was i was thinking about the, 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 the goal but it oh the other thing yeah the other thing was to finish the four books i have that i kind of use i think i showed you before but i've got four books i've kind of got to read and i want to basically finish those and do a little report here for the blog so that's basically my new year's resolution but i think the weight thing is probably the first one because that's going to also include the pushing up the push-ups the sit-ups the what the kind of crossfit stuff i'm doing in the morning um of course the running probably going to require doing three or four miles every other day here and there um, and then obviously hopefully getting up to a point where I can do 20 miles per week so that's always going to be included in it but the big goal is definitely to get from 277 to 200 pounds um, between now and basically I'm going to say June but I, I, I hope that could be sooner but you know if I kind of keep a steady plan and make sure I'm eating why oh yeah and eating plan um, that's what's the main part of the diet is um, I'm going to be following the slow carb diet from Tim Ferriss which essentially means that you eat um, 
loads of greens, loads of proteins, not bread, no, basically cutting out the carb and anything white and all the processed food and sugar. Um, you do that for essentially six, no, you do it for essentially five days out of the week, six days out of the week. And then on the one day, it's called diet is going wild on the Saturday. You kind of have free reigns to eat whatever you want. So you kind of keep yourself tight from Monday to Friday, Saturday, you eat what you want and Sunday, get back on the wagon again. So it's a pretty decent way to structure things. Um, I might throw in some intermittent fasting here and there, but I don't think that's going to be needed. I think as long as I stay off all that other crap stuff I was on before, I should be pretty okay. So that basically is a plan between now and then. So um, I don't know. Let me know what your plans are. What are you guys doing for New Year's resolutions? Do you have any? Um, can you be bothered to do some? Because I know it can be hard to find motivation during this tough year that we're in at the moment. But I do think, again, because I have a sneaky feeling that there's going to be a lot more disappointment down the road. There's going to be all these sort of like, you know, optimistic targets they're giving us about, oh, yeah, we're going to be able to go back to normal by March and april uh or whatever march april may i just don't believe it i think they're way far off especially considering how crappy our government has dealt with things so far i just don't believe they're going to suddenly be able to fix it even with the vaccine in, in mind so with that in mind i'm trying to make sure that i keep my mind <laughs> somewhat sane so that i can handle whatever sort of roadblocks um, i come across uh, between now and the end of the year so yeah let me know in the comments down below what are you going to be doing for new year's resolution do you have any concrete plans like i said my plan is mostly weight loss i've got a plan to get down from 277 to 200 and of course i'm going to update you guys on the podcast and let you know as i go on my journey but it should be pretty interesting it should be pretty easy i say because again i've done this about three or four times prior um but again it, at that time before covid it was easy to do because you know life was normal so i was doing the workout in in kind of com combination with my running regime which also helped me to practice and to kind of get my cardiovascular endurance up for my races so I was sort of losing the weight, getting faster, and also signing up for those races. I was doing like a 5K every other week. Then I went to Barcelona, did a half marathon. Then I came back here and did a half marathon in Brighton, um, in Bristol. Sorry, then I did one again here in London. Like I was just doing all these races. So it sort of kind of helped to sort of push me. You know what I mean? But when you've got, when you're in this weird situation where essentially I'm working out for nothing because there's nowhere to go, right? If, because if I say I'm working out, most of the time it's work out to look good in clothes. That's basically my main function for it. And if I can't wear great clothes because there's no clubs, and there's no bars, and there's no restaurants to go to, then why am I doing it? But, you know, I think in terms of realigning myself, getting myself in a somewhat somewhat back to some sort of normal level mental footing i think it's going to be crucial and again it's just going to allow me to have a little bit of a distraction so to pull me away from the computer pull me away from the smartphone kind of have me plug you know detach myself from all that social media internet stimulus and kind of put me back out in nature you know it's good for your um, mood and your state as well running elevates all that shit you know the first five minutes are always flipping brutal then after that you kind of get into the flow you know all that good stuff people talk about good old runners high but yeah let me know what you're doing in the comments down below new resolution i'd love to know your thoughts and opinions okay so next on this what we have here we have this um pretty cool <laughs> video this guy put together i think his name is jonathan ogden he put together a really cool skit that's very um very accurate and also somewhat triggering as to um the kind of usual conversations you hear on podcasts uh, you know if you listen to podcasts enough you kind of always i think you've you definitely come across um this segment of the interview mm. especially when it's two intellectuals or somebody of some ritual or somebody with some very controversial opinions or maybe someone in the news or whatever it may be or somebody that's sort of prone to a lot of hot takes you hear them say you hear them sort of having this sort of back and forth dialogue and it's really really interesting so definitely um, i'm going to play it for you now it's just from a guy called jonathan ogden and he says the following uh, podcast saying literally nothing for 20 minutes so that that's mm. what i think yeah that's so true you know i'm really glad you brought that up i think this is really important and if i can just mm -hmm. speak about this for a minute yeah because I've, I've really been thinking about this quite a lot. And mm -hmm. um, here's the thing, right? Here's when it all comes down to it mm -hmm. and we like really begin to understand, like, this is what I think. and But th this is why we have you on. It's my opinion. Yeah. It's what yeah. I really... So my friend works at the New York Times, right? Oh, nice. Yeah. And um, <laughs> so this is what I think. There's a lot of conversation <laughs> and there's a lot of dialogue around the subject without really dissecting and understanding the subject. And I think what we really need, and I've said this before, I've said this on my podcast, if people want to know, check that out, check that out as well, but we'll put the link in. I think what's really important <laughs> is that we, 
generate more conversation around. I mean, what we're doing right now. Yeah, you know. Yeah, this kind of like <laughs> it's so important. No, for sure, it's so important. It's so important. It really is. Like we it need really this. Is. Yeah. So that that's really good. Isn't it? That is really good skit, man. Sometimes these skits can get a little bit corny, but that was really well done. So definitely check him out. Um, his handle is J Ogden UK. Jonathan Ogden. Um, I'm guessing he's like a what a comedian, podcaster, topic guy. Yes, yeah, singer, songwriter, producer, designer. Definitely check him out. A cool little skit did there. Um, that's very triggering. Also very very accurate. Next on the list. Yeah, we have some interesting COVID news, isn't it? Right, this is just for the UK, of course. Um, <laughs> this is why I said earlier about making sure you fortify your mind and get some New Year's resolutions on your list. So, I guess to follow up the press conference that Boris had the other day, he then did another one with two of our leading um, scientists that are basically helping him out, um, Witty and the other dude. And Witty said the following thing that really made a lot of people concerned, right? And he said, um, "Let me see if I can find something about next winter, right?" So yeah, this is the point. So this is it. <laughs> so there were, so obviously um at the press conference I'll read the segment actually. So I'll talk about it. So on the segment, so in the press conference, here's what was said. At the press conference on Tuesday, Mr. Johnson repeated the suggestion that there is a prospect of a lockdown being eased in mid-February. So again, they fought out this carrot, which I think is fine. I think it's kind of a good way to sort of um uh increase compliance, right? Because everyone's definitely people are i would assume most people most normal sensible adults are probably at the end of their tether when it comes to um lockdowns and stuff right even the ones that are like you know hold up in their homes that haven't left since you know march or something are getting a bit bored and a little bit frustrated of having to always lock down and it not really working and we're doing the same thing again and again blah 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 so i get the idea of like putting out some sort of lofty goal some sort a kind of a stretch goal hoping that you kind of achieve it in order to kind of get people to agree to do what you want them to do right not to achieve you know you put you put a, a, a goal in mind that might be unrealistic in the hopes that people can strive to achieve it so they can stay indoors right it's kind of it serves a purpose there but when I saw that instantly, I thought that doesn't make any sense. If we fucked up so much now that we need to go into a third lockdown, um, and then you know a few weeks ago, uh, the prime minister was more than happy for us to have a five day relaxation of the rules so that we can go see our families and enjoy Christmas. I don't necessarily see how suddenly, in the space of a month and a bit, we're going to be able to ease the restriction. It just doesn't make any sense to me. So I was first of all that that rang a bell in my head. I was like, mm, this is not true. It continues here. Um, a quote for him. He says. But you also appreciate that there are a lot of caveats, a lot of ifs built into that. The most important of which is that we all know, we all now follow the guidelines, he said. Earlier, the cabinet minister, Michael Gove, told Sky News that he could not say exactly when the England lockdown would end. But we, as we enter in March, we should be able to lift some of these restrictions. So already you're seeing the issue. You're seeing the prime minister say the following mid Jan February. And then you're seeing Michael Gove go on Sky earlier on the day and say sometime in March. So that's why I say in my earlier video from before and my other podcast, I said that I think normal life will only return in 2022 at the earliest beginning of 2022. And when I say normal life, I mean, whatever you're doing in 2019, you're going to be able to do that again in 2022, not end of this year, 2021. Don't get that enthusiastic about it. It continues. Um, Mr. Witty said, the virus is not going to well go away, just as the flu doesn't go away, just as any other virus doesn't go away, right? Good point. He said the following, we shouldn't kid ourselves that this disappearing within the spring. He said the following, Mr. Witty said, although he's hopeful that there will be no measures needed from the spring onwards, the government might have to bring in a few restrictions next winter. And this is where I was like, you know what? This is the reason why you have to be careful and you have to, when people say follow the science, you can't just follow the science because if you follow the science, like if you've ever been to a doctor and they tell you that you have to take an X amount of time off work or from recreational activities, sometimes they give you the most um, generous of windows because, you know, that's what they do. They're meant to be looking after your health. They're not there to optimize your performance levels. But if you're smart enough and you heal, well, you know, people's bodies are different. Um, if you do the right things prior, you can sometimes speed up the process of healing. And sometimes I feel, to, I feel like to myself, this over-reliance on listening to the scientists is going to put us in a position where we're going to be in permanent lockdown because they would rather we get to like a COVID zero status, which we're not going to achieve. If we weren't to achieve that, we should have followed what New Zealand were doing prior. But 
the but with that if we do just stay indoors and lock in place until the virus is completely eradicated there won't be nothing for us to kind of return back to once we do go out of our homes so they're in a really precarious position here the government where they necessarily haven't done a great job because they haven't listened to the scientists early enough they've acted slow and then when they have listened to them they've always kind of um um sided or aired on the side of caution which is obviously then angered everybody because it's like hey you could have done this two weeks ago you didn't then when you do do it you give us another month it's like you know there's no win in that regard so again like i said before um fortify your mind body and soul as much as you can if you live in the uk if you live in major parts of europe i would advise that more than likely your life will only return back to some semblance of normality at a stretch at a very stretch the end of 2021 but in my opinion the earliest will be the beginning of 2022 sad news i know but that is a fact in my opinion next and then you know to make matters worse i stumbled upon this video um courtesy of this young lady's name which uh, i'm trying to pronounce is it avital chisnik goldschmidt and it's a video of a max vaccination drive drive through essentially um outside of a stadium it looks like in israel um you know they figured out a way to vaccinate the, the majority of the population via a drive through and i haven't even seen that in the uk i've not even seen you know we're not even fortifying our borders we're not even you know we're not doing jack shit we're just essentially allowing anyone to come in and out we're then doing these sort of like soft touch lockdowns no curfews no enforcements on the streets for the most part um and then we're just hoping it kind of all goes away with the vaccine whereas in israel they've got these sort of amazing amazing drive through setup where they essentially be able to vaccinate people as they're sitting in their cars like just incredible and so this is the video here i'm going to quickly play for you וכדי שזה יקרה, פתחנו עבור חברי מכבי במתחם אצטדיון סמי עופר בחיפה את הדרייבין הראשון והיחיד בישראל לחיסוני קורונה. festivals like Coachella, Primavera, you know, festivals maybe like Coachella mostly, and maybe some other bigger ones, and, you know, maybe some parts of the world, I'd imagine like a Monaco, I don't know, some richy parts, I can imagine further down the line, if the world hasn't kind of gotten a grip of COVID, the rich and the people with access are basically just going to create their own little utopias, they're already doing it now with Dubai and places, right, they're going to create their own little places where they're going to be able to sort of control who comes in and out, make sure people get vaccinated, and just kind of live life as normal in these little bubbles that they have of course it's going to mean you're going to have to you're going to have to be you're going to have to have the means and the availability to sort of probably you know go 14 days before and and kind of stay 14 days after the day to quarantine loads of other stuff are going to come into place but i think sooner or later if the countries and the governments don't get a grip on covid the major the kind of the mind, small minority of people who have the means will just kind of pull away as they have done already right they're behind massive walls they're in high story apartment buildings and penthouses but they're definitely going to use opportunity as a as a chance to kind of pull away from regular society and just enjoy their own little utopia whilst we sort of wallow away and fight over toilet roll in flipping morrisons <laughs> Wow. So as you can, if we just listen to it, so as they're going in, I'll just mute the video a little bit because the sounds annoying. Uh, the cars pull up to a sort of little tents um, set up with nurses and people able to help and administer the vaccine. Everyone's marked up and, you know, this is the people they're actually going through, I guess, team meeting, telling them what they're going to do. Um, and then essentially the cars just drive up, I guess, and fill out some details. They get vaccinated and then they drive through and come out the other side and they're basically done. Okay, so they come out of the car actually to get vaccinated. Okay, so it's a drive through that you park up, you come in, get vaccinated, jump back in your car and leave. But pretty effortlessly done, isn't it? Loads of nice hindsight as a station, talking to some of the local population there. <laughs> Lovely language, isn't it? <laughs> And I haven't seen any of that stuff here in the UK. None of it. I'm not sure. It, let me know if in, in the comments if you've seen something like this from your country. Um, are they doing drive through? <laughs> Look, all the way through the night, 24 7 around the clock, they can do something like this, right? Um, and you'd imagine, especially in the UK, with them wanting to have like 1 million people vaccinated per week, like this would be the only way to do it, isn't it? You'd imagine, right? Uh, but hey, what can you do? What can you do? 
next on the list yeah this is interesting this is a this is a good one so um talking about people pulling away from society if the longer this goes on and you know they don't get a grip of the situation um i've kind of got i must have gotten over it but there was a time maybe sometime in the middle of the year especially when I, it was kind of obvious that the year was gonna end without me going anywhere right and without me kind of enjoying the things i enjoy in my normal life as most of us um are having to um kind of endure during this tough time of covid there was a time i guess maybe end of the year octoberish novemberish when i started seeing loads of like i started seeing a real uptick in influences and people online just going to these far-flung you know exotic locations at the time i didn't really pay too much mind about it because you always see some influencer you know walking and doing that kind of hand on the back pose and you know in some sort of crystal blue sea somewhere doing you know that happy face you see it quite often so you're a bit numb to it but during the pandemic i felt this tinge of like anger when i see these kind of things because it's like it's such a um it's such a distant reality to you and i right to regular folk and it's such a kind of constant reminder as the gap it's constant constant reminder that you know there are two different realities in the COVID world. People love to say we're all going through this together, especially celebrities, but they're not really. Um, they have obviously the ability and the means for the most part to be able to earn a living at home and not be able to, you know, walk, walk, walk up to a building site or go to an office building or go and stack shelves in a shopping center. And they also have the ability to earn money, you know, sitting behind a computer, which is definitely a privilege, right? Not everyone has that ability either. So, with that, you feel to yourself like with well, the majority of the people of the world in some sort of lockdown, not able to kind of move and do the things that they want to do. You would imagine there'll be a little bit of like, um, I don't know, tact and taste and sort of like reading of the room when it comes to displaying all your wealth and where you're going and where you're holidaying and how you're kind of getting away from all the stress of COVID. You'd expect that would be it in it, but it doesn't. And they just keep regurgitating that shit out there. And again, I don't know who they're doing it for. Because if it's a you and I, I'm not impressed by it because I know there's people, you know, they have means, they have, you know, they have the time. They have the access. So it's not that imp impressive when you see somebody that's a multimillionaire, you know, going to Aruba or going to Hawaii or going to parts of Mexico or going to Southeast, not Southeast Asia because they're not allowed to go there, but, you know, wherever they're going or Dubai, it's not that impressive, but they still constantly keep throwing it into our faces and it's just getting a bit irksome. It's kind of annoying me. It's pissing me off, to be honest. And before I didn't really give a shit, you know, like I said previously, I think we're a year and a half in now, or we're possibly, we're going to be approaching a year and a half in with this nonsense happening soon. Um, and I think people have kind of decided what side defense they fall on in terms of how they are conducting themselves with COVID. Some people stay in, some people go outdoors and do what they want to do. But I have a, my think is that why don't you just keep some of the things to yourself? Why do we have to know about everything that you're doing? Why are you rubbing into our faces that you're not living the same reality that we're living? Because we know you're not, but we don't want to keep getting reminded of it constantly. And it's a bit irksome. It's just a bit really annoying. Um, and the, the, obviously this article here from the BBC that sort of speaks about a little bit about what I'm talking about. And it's titled the following, COVID travel, why Instagram is full of celebrities on a holiday. This is the following. Um, if you're in a reality television fan who follows your favorite celebrity stars online, chances are you've seen them jetting off to luxury destinations. With much of England first plunged into the four, into tier four and now lockdown, many seem to be wondering how all these glamorous breaks have been able to uh, go ahead at a time when millions are being told to stay at home. From a Love Island star facing charges of a lead COVID bridge in Barbados to a Celtic football team drawing Scottish government criticism for traveling to Dubai, the tabloids and social media have been full of scrutiny. So what is going on and what do the rules say? Before Prime Minister Boris Johnson announced strict rules, England was under the tier, f tier system. The reality is that some of the stars posting his travel in the recent weeks may have left the country for their winter breaks when their local areas were still under tier 2 or tier 3, when the advice about travelling was less strict. Um, the guidance urged people to stay local and carefully consider where they were going to fly abroad, but did not ban trips explicitly. So that's kind of the loophole they've been taking advantage of. And I think in the summer, when I was a little bit more critical of normal people going to Spain and shit, I was then when November came along, I was really jealous. Cause I was thinking, you know what? I should have taken advantage of it. That was when we didn't have tears and we were sort of like 
semi open right and people will kind of fly into places in spain places in greece places in portugal to get a bit of sun and have a little break from what was going on in, you know in the world here in england and that made complete sense at that time it was still annoying but it made sense now obviously no one can go anywhere not even the people that have the money regular folks they can't actually go because you know you don't want to have to come back and quarantine for a certain amount of time especially with work and all this sort of stuff it's only allowing a certain group of people who don't have a conventional job to basically pick up their bags and go over they want and it's just annoying to keep watching it it continues the rules are stronger for those who plunge it into higher tier four which was announced on london da, da, da. anyway some influencers and celebrities have been tagging brands and talent agencies in their posts indicating that content shared abroad is sponsored or paid work and travel is overseas is made for workers reasons under the four under tier four where their job could not be done at home which is fine right you'd imagine a lot of these places in dubai especially some of the bigger hotel chains are definitely flying out a lot of your favorite love island stars and whatever they may be because those guys are excellent marketing tools excellent places to kind of advertise whatever you're selling and uh because the weird thing that i think was well with those people is that they oddly have a really i'm so oddly i would imagine a lot of reality tv star fans a lot of reality TV fans generally don't all kind of live the same lifestyles as the people they sort of like admire, right? I'd imagine the people that love Teen Mum, there's, you know, they're not all Teen Mums. They're just regular people that love the show and the drama that's on it. But the odd thing about Love Island, those kind of TV shows, even though I don't watch them myself, from what I've seen the people, because I mean, you know, I know the kind of person that kind of appears on the show. I'm kind of familiar with that personality. The odd thing is that the same people that are on the show are also fans of it. So everything that they're showing on their Instagram pages, whether it's teeth whitening and flipping turkey, whether it's going to to an amazing villa somewhere or resort in the middle of Dubai or in Bali these are things that those same fans would want to do themselves so it's a great marketing tool you know to be objective but as again as a person living in the world and you know who's unable to do the things that he enjoys and go to the places I want to go to because again you have a I have a job and I can't just fly out in the middle of the week to a random location it's just annoying to keep seeing that's the thing it's just absolutely annoying I'm not going to deny it. it really is it continues to travel Trending Travel is a holiday company that specializes in using celebrities to promote trips, which customers can then book and experience for themselves. COE, um, C C O C O E, um, Keith Herman launched the company last year and points out that this is period between December and March is a key time for these hard hit travel industries to market summer holidays. So that makes sense, right? During lockdown, even though it's a lockdown, um, this is usually, I guess, a dead month for travel um, companies and stuff and locations. So they usually use that kind of dead month between December and March to advertise to inf to kind of you know seed influencers these tickets in the hope that they can sell some flights for destinations that they don't probably sell sell usually during that period so it continues um this is the ceo this is the following travel operators travel agents and operators alike are all in the same boat and we need to get through these tough times especially the next few months which is a critical sales period he told bbc and it's not just the firm and influencers promoting the booking summer holiday marketing is rife across the industry including Ryanair marketing flights with the slogans such as jab and go and the vaccines are coming which was a super interesting funny flipping argument Mr. Herman's company had well-known figures included Love Island's Love Island stars with over 1 million followers sharing posts um, from the Maldives and Dubai in recent days but he's asked them to stop tagging the firm in post in light of the lockdown he says we will just have to be creative and find ways to promoting ourselves for the next couple of months he said on tuesday which you're obviously doing this article so again it's just it's just annoying again i don't know whether or not i'm just speaking out of turn I mean, it kind of sounds like i'm being jealous which i probably am but just to be out indoors and not seeing all this stuff going it's just annoying and then of course on the other side of things in america you've got this sort of weird instance happening where you've got all these influences just essentially ignoring any kind of lockdown and deciding you know what like i'm just gonna live my life and do what i'm doing there's no there is no such thing as covid i'm gonna go out and party do what i want to do get as many tests as i can to kind of make sure that i can party that's the odd thing i guess we have the djs in the world who are flying to these weird locations you know um you know 10 hour flights to places um essentially going to play in countries where the governments are purposely not taking a serious outlook on covid because they just don't give a shit about their populace and because they hope it's an opportunity for them to kind of gain more control blah 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 and then they obviously exploiting the citizens and exploiting the artists because they then get into book these people for cheaper or have access to even book them in the first place because they're not out playing in some other far-flung location so if people do, so don't get me wrong it's not as bad as the djs 
but still some of these LA folks are like, you know, now you've seen them flying to Miami and Florida and all these kind of places, but it's a weird thing. It doesn't make, it's just pretty really odd to see. And obviously Def Noodles on Twitter has been, you know, documenting a lot of this stuff. And he posted this um, little back and forth between one YouTuber called Chris Clemens and a guy called James Charles. And he said the following, I guess J Jeff, James Charles posted a, you know, a status said the following, what videos do you want to see more from me in 2021? It's a question. And Chris Clemens quote tweeted and said the following, stay at home challenge the wear a mask hmm, maybe one where you convey to your impressionable audience how is probably how to properly handle the global pandemic he said again he quoted tweet, he replied to his own tweet and said this isn't shade or tea or anything i truly want the best for james but it's just insanely disrespectful and selfish to be treating this pandemic the way he and his friends continue to do it's weird and it is it definitely is weird um, and again it's just a show of it as well that's odd i'm gonna get on later to this dj nasty and her stupid person she put out there but i don't know what it is about these people that i guess for the most part i guess i get it because if you're an influencer part of the reason why an influencer is because you like to kind of document and share your journey or your day or whatever you're getting up to that's part of the fun so if you can't share it then it doesn't it doesn't exist it's sort of like it didn't happen so even during a lockdown when it's probably not the most um tactful thing to do to share your sort of wealth and where you're going and your ability to kind of pick up your bags and just go wherever you want to go you still feel like you need to do it because if not then why would you bother going the whole reason why you're going to these far-flung locations sun-kissed islands is you so you can go and document your journey and share it with your fans and flex somewhat if you can't flex then it doesn't matter it's sort of that famous adage right if a tree falls and no one heard it for or no one saw it for then did that actually tree fall and this is exactly what they're sort of into at the moment so again i don't know man maybe influencers should cut them some more slack but they're really annoying me at the moment i'm kind of getting pissed off about you know them essentially just living an entirely different reality to you and i maybe that is the nature of the beast but i would much prefer it if they sort of kept that to themselves if at all possible moving on what else do we have here yeah let's talk about this actually let's go straight to this one because i think this is probably the best way to talk about it. let's jump on it straight off the back of this so um talking about annoying um people online the other part of it has been super annoying and something that i've kind of been trying to wrangle in my head doesn't know i still haven't worked it out but there's this there's a weird prevalence of these djs especially the more these that you would imagine are in the sort of the higher bracket in sort of like dj fee because it's hard to judge right djs in general from what i've seen and from what i know being from being a fan of the music and djing myself and going to all these different clubs and festivals it's very difficult to say that you know a a dj is in a certain tier because sometimes it's not about skill a lot of it it's not about taste it's not about a, i don't know whatever it, it doesn't come down to those kind of artistic uh, measurements right it's usually sometimes down to about appeal branding marketing all these sort of other things that don't really have to do with the act of actually djing and enjoying music and all that sort of good stuff make people dance so if somebody's in the top tier of a dj in category uh, top tier in terms of like dj fees it doesn't necessarily equate that that person is also the best like for instance in football Lionel messi Cristiano Ronaldo are two of the highest paid footballers in the world that it's easier to deduce from that if you go down a list of like the players you know in descending order more than likely they'll also be kind of ranked in terms of their ability to play football but in arts and entertainment it's not necessarily the same thing sometimes the people that make the most money are usually the shittest right usually the most horriblest people they put out the crappiest work it doesn't really matter um it's died you know it's instagrammable microwaveable bullshit and i think djing is sort of in the same realm but it can be difficult because for the most part it's quite hard to just go from like zero to top tier you have to have some level of talent ability craft skill um obviously you may be you know your marketing team exploits it somewhat you may be able to kind of hack the algorithm but you have to start with something you can't just come in you know with nothing and sort of make it from the top to the bottom it doesn't work that way oh you can but it doesn't it's not a sustained career so when i look at somebody like a nastia who's you know a fairly well established dj in, you know from ukraine i'm pretty sure um who's kind of a part of the sort of group of the sort of like sexy hot girls and techno at the moment you know the this few others i won't be able to mention their names but in terms of skill and bits of dj she's pretty good so there's no problem that but she's also one of the people that are on the top band of dj so people that you would assume get paid the highest whenever they go and playing and in a normal year she's probably going to be playing plus 
100 gigs per year right traveling all over the world playing at some of the biggest stages biggest festivals biggest clubs doing the big 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 thing collecting checks as she kind of goes along um you know living fast doing her thing and enjoying so it's always so it's been very interesting and very bizarre to witness throughout this entire log for our entire covid ordeal the people that occupy the highest echelons in terms of djing fee are also the ones that are most susceptible to break kind of convention go and fly to a different country to go and play usually in a third world country um and to, in order to go and collect a check right that's basically what they're going to do it's not again it's not a bad thing i'm sort of someone judging what you're going to do but it does seem odd did it it does seem bizarre i, I remember i mentioned in the previous podcast that it did seem like there was a little bit of a collective silence and hypocrisy attached to the djs that played in a new year's eve party in ukraine recently because a lot of those djs were sort of people that you would imagine are in the sort of middle to lower middle um tier in terms of djing fees so a lot of those people would probably need the money more so than somebody that can that shit you would assume again i don't know about people's bills but you'd assume the fact um so i think that a lot of the people in the scene sort of like you know um collectively decided to ignore who was on the playing on the list and didn't chastise them too much and obviously the people on the list uh, apart from blauan kept it quiet didn't mention anything um on the feed and people just sort of kind of let them go on but nastya put this really tone deaf post out on the instagram page essentially celebrating the fact that she's traveling from ukraine all the way to colombia to go play a gig in a country where the covid numbers are astronomical and in a country where most likely than not the local government is you know i won't say purposely uh not taking covid seriously but they're not addressing it in, in a way that you probably should be addressing it um due to whatever they're going through over there but it really should be up to the person that has more information the person that obviously has more means to maybe you know um reject that offer maybe pass the offer on to maybe a local person that can play that lives within the neighboring countries of Colombia so that you're limiting the amount of spread or what you're contributing to the rising cases you'd imagine so right but it doesn't happen and again why would you post this on your page as well that's the other question too on it but anyway this is Nashia's page and she obviously accompanies it with a complete photo shoot of me 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 so there's loads of such um narcissistic qualities attached to that as well you know another reminder here's my pretty face here's my me me looking but it continues here's a post says she has the following how are the first days of 2021 so far mine are very intense and interesting and she does she's she's got a tendency to you know um overshare on social anyway i think even before lockdown she's an annoying follower that's why i kind of stopped following her she's always sort of like pouring her heart out about how badly she played a set and how inadequate she feels me 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 so it can get a bit meany but let's continue <clears throat> how are your first days of 2021 so far she says uh, mine are very intense and interesting now packing my bags to fly to colombia and then ecuador tomorrow will be my first flight since march again people doing this in the summer when all the little summer covid raves are happening and it was annoying and you know, my first flight since june my first flight since it's like shut the fuck up right? no one is flying for the most part it's a privilege that you're able to play music in front of a crowd and get paid whatever you get paid you're usually flying to a location where it shouldn't be open to tourists it is open the moment you leave you know the numbers completely spike so you're probably killing a lot more people than you actually realize it continues she says i'm nervous and excited feeling like the travel for the first time in my life i travel to mix gigs and holidays good to know for two weeks free weekends i will be playing in bogota medellin cali and uh, cali in colombia and then the lost beach festival or lost beach club in montana ecuador in between i'll visit one of my favorite cities in the world Cartagena. it'll be my third time going there and every time i go last time i want to take I want to take maximum from it honestly i don't believe it it's real i miss you so much feeling lucky pictures made by karma 2021 trip and it's such a tone deaf post it's such an idiotic post like it's infuriating like and and then you think to yourself right oh it's not that big of a deal i guess you know, why do you give a shit look at the numbers look this is the page right look at the numbers here you have total cases 1.7 million uh deaths 44 000. And supposedly they're already thinking about going into a lockdown, right? I think I've got the article here. Colombia, yeah. Ah, uh, yeah, 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 yeah. So here's the article here. It says the following. 
Um, no thanks. Colombia brings back lockdown as coronavirus case rises. Uh, it says the following: uh, as the holiday season winds down, Colombia is experiencing a sharp rise in coronavirus infections that has prompted several cities to impose curfews and stay-at-home measures that had not been implemented for months. In the capital Bogota, where she's flipping going, the absolute donut, the local government locked down three districts that have a population of 2.5 million people, ordering all these businesses except for the supermarkets and pharmacies in what part of the city to close. In Medellin, Colombia's second and largest cities authorities announce a curfew that will last from 10 p.m to 5 a.m every day until next week nighttime curfews have also been adopted in the city of cali which is growing as well and then sometimes uh sometimes along colombia's caribbean coast where thousands of tourists are still spending their holidays officials said the measures are being taken to control the growing number of infections and stabilize hospital rates are you insane and then here she is posting a, a sort of like glorified travel flex image of her going to apply and going to fly somewhere and it made me think right why, why all these people do this because a lot of the responses have been pretty negative as you probably would assume um yeah congrats they're traveling uh, uh we're saying oh i hope you have a lovely time only 1.7 million cases and i heard that of course practically nothing almost doesn't exist Colombia's waiting um so there's been some negative response i think she might have deleted a few of the comments as well which you know is probably smart in her regards um superstar djs traveling the world and actually accepting gigs during a current crisis makes me want to puke of course i definitely agree with that and it got me thinking why do these people do this especially forget forget accepting a gig we know why they accept it because they need the money right even if they're the most highest paid djs it seems like they live fast they die they they, they, they earn their money fast and they burn for it fast for the most part you'd imagine so right because if you're looking at her pockets which i don't really want to do but you'd imagine she gets paid anywhere between five thousand euros to thirty thousand euros per gig right and if you imagine all the other gigs she's played prior to this you'd imagine somebody would have a pretty decent savings off the back of that but probably not you know expenses come out you know you, you if you earn a lot of money you probably your cost of living per month is high too who cares but it got me thinking why are they posting these things online part of my thinking is that a lot of these people especially some of these djs that op occupy the sort of higher echelons the sort of a like higher tier band in terms of djing fees a lot of them do it more so for the gram or more so for social media they do the actual craft of being a dj they enjoy the fact that they're kind of essentially like glorified influencers that happen to also dj because if you're an influencer part of the reason to be an influencer is to show what you're doing and sort of share your journey recommendations the stuff you're into the stuff you're thinking about it's sort of like you know it's about you it's sort of like encom all encompassing of your world so i think when you're a sort of like influencer dj person um you want to always be playing at the most amazing location so you can keep your feed updated of images of you playing all these lovely locations because if you go through nasha's page it's just a whole grid full of selfies right of her playing places looking cute spinning in a place holding her hands up in the air going through records it's a sort of typical you know corny um manufactured you know instagram ready instagram approved sort of content that you would expect so it's so it shouldn't be a surprise that even during a global pandemic where people are losing their jobs people are dying left and right and center no one's had the ability to go out and do anything like again i'm at the, I'm at the lower level of a dj um and i haven't played a gig proper prop one where i've been paid since what february J january was my last place i basically got to play everyone's suffering in some way some regard but you're saying to yourself hey I'm sacrificing whatever I'm doing like everyone else is in the hopes that if we all kind of band together and sort of like um, do what we can in our part, we can hopefully combat this disease, make sure everyone's safe, make sure we don't have any unnecessary deaths, people get vaccinated and then the world can reopen up again and we can get back on the dance floor. Everybody can do this and everyone could do it with a clean mind. No one needs to feel guilty. No one needs to have, you know, bad vibes being sent to them on the internet. It's just an easy thing to just continue on. So sometimes I think a lot of these people, they're just doing it only for the gram and only for that kind of weird validation. Whereas it's like, if she go, if she played it in, in Colombia and she didn't post it on Instagram, it wouldn't matter. It wouldn't be as um, impactful. It wouldn't be as important. It wouldn't actually be something that she'd even appreciate. She has to be able to share it with you, and uh, and for the for the for good or what for the good and for the worse. And um, that's the position that basically at the moment. But 
like I said, man, it's just, it's so annoying to see. You know what I mean? It's just annoying. Like I said, off the back of seeing the influencers posting all their shit and deciding to break COVID rules, people setting up these illegal parties are doing more damage than good. It's just frustrating because this is just inevitably adding more time to us kind of like being locked in place and not be able to do what we know and love. And it's just frustrating that these people don't see anywhere past themselves. They're so selfish. They're so self-centered, so self-absorbed um, that it just beggars belief really. And this is probably a better example of it, right? She's announced and she's going to go play in all these amazing locations and here's three images of me 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 like okay like we don't know what you look like like bloody hell man absolute wallad but yeah i guess maybe i'm in the maybe i'm just overreacting in this regard but it really does put a bee in my bonnet man especially yeah i don't know but yeah let me know in the comments, man. Do you, do you think I'm overreacting? Um, do you get annoyed when you see some of these, um, you know, high paid DJs flying to third world countries, um, second world countries to go and play um, in places like they probably should have no business being in against lives in fucking Ukraine? She's, you know, it doesn't make any sense. Or do you think, you know, it's a capitalist world. She has her bills to pay. She needs to get her money. It is what it is. Let me know in the comments down below. I'd love to know your thoughts and opinions regarding it. Bum, 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 bum. what else we have here oh yeah we have this uh what else we have here yeah we have we have this right this is another kind of a uh, thing that made me laugh where is it thing that made me laugh all right so yeah, there we go here there we go so someone uploaded this post or someone shared this post on twitter actually the other day which kind of again got my blood boiling apparently this is a rave or sorry a festival in new zealand where earth, where earth gang is playing right earth gang is playing in a festival in new zealand right now or they were prior like are you are you kidding me are you kidding me and, and of course we're not allowed to compare things are different wherever in other places you know smaller population they're in ireland they can control their borders easy wherever maybe but look at what other countries are doing that have gotten a handle of covid look what they're doing look <laughs> I don't know man i really don't know i really don't know and they keep telling us we can't compare why can't we compare why are we not allowed to compare other countries great response to covid to ours why can i want to do that again i'm not saying it should be a one-for-one -one comparison and copy and paste what they're doing but surely there's aspects of their approach that we can copy and sort of like you know um do here like is that possible can we not do that at all like jesus christ man and then um, this young lady as well explained some of the reasons why they were able to sort of uh, combat COVID a lot better in New Zealand than we did here in the UK. So let's hear what she has to say. Yes, so New Zealand borders are closed. Uh, the only people that can get in are citizens and residents of New Zealand. However, even them, when they come, they have to go into a government quarantine facility for 14 days. So they're not allowed to see friends, family, no one. You get to the airport and you get taken straight to this facility, which is like a four slash five star hotel. So it's not bad. Um, and you get your, your food delivered to you and you have to have COVID tests throughout. Uh, and then at the end of the 14 day period, if you've tested negative for COVID, multiple multiple times, then you're allowed to go back out into the community. So that's how we've ensured um, that there hasn't really been too many cases that have come in the borders to the community. Uh, they usually get caught very, very quickly. So how can we not do that? Why can't we do that? What's so hard about doing that? Now, don't get me wrong. A lot of the things she's talking about, I'm pretty sure you probably have to pay for that whole hotel service thing. I'm sure of it. But regardless, why isn't that an option? Why can't we have people, you know, getting tested before they uh, pass through the departure gates or departure doors in, you know, our local airports. Why isn't that possible? Why are we so reliant on the vaccine? And again, they said earlier, right, the vaccine isn't going to save us completely, but we're still relying on it. It's just, ugh, I don't know, man. I despair. I despair. And um, what else are we going to do? We've got another thing here. Ba, 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 ba. what's we'll talk about before we end oh yeah cool let's talk about this even though i didn't want to talk about it because i think there's a the update's more interesting than the actual story itself so as I'm, i think most of you are aware um news spread the other day that supposedly kim kardashian and Kanye West are getting divorced um it says here headline for page six that she's done um again took him to my as a big kanye fan <laughs> how the hell i start this yeah 
it's weird this news right because i think in in prior years you know i probably would have been a lot more concerned about this than i am now and again like i said um, as a big big fan of kanye right from everything to his albums to his fashion to his rants uh to his live shows to his marketing rollouts i just love everything about the guy i think he's a, an absolute creative genius right he's a force to be reckoned with like he's complete he's like a one of a kind a complete freak show um but over the years, his antics outside of the arts have really kind of rubbed me up the wrong way, right? The way he sort of kind of constantly manipulated things and twisted things and purposely being a bit of an agent provocateur, even though he doesn't necessarily suffer any of the consequences of stuff that he's done. He sabotaged people's rollouts. He's done all this really snaky backbite stuff like the even the issue with the Sunday service, quiet not being paid, even though it doesn't have nothing to do with him. It might just be a clerical error, but there's so many things involved with Kanye outside of music that really give you an idea that he's a bit of a shitty person and i guess because i was naive as a fan as a stan i kind of overlooked the shitty parts of kanye because he kept giving me so many great amazing moments you know in terms of albums songs features fashion stuff and inspirational um interviews that you kind of overlook those things but when you stop paying attention to that and you sort of started seeing more of the person of kanye sort of showing himself um it's hard to like it's hard to like him and i'm sure in person he's a probably a really warm uh personable guy he's obviously really open in terms of collaborating he's also really generous in terms of keeping up opportunities and putting them in different places i'm sure of that he's got a good track record you can just look at anyone from virgil to jerry lorenzo he's done everything to kind of put people in position but in terms of how he just treats you know him and the influence that he has he's just too reckless and too much of a doof for me at the moment to give a shit about so when i saw this news at first i really couldn't give a shit right i couldn't care less um doesn't concern me it's not my business it's obviously upsetting for them together as a couple and obviously the family no one wants to see a family getting broken up in public but the development since the story has actually evolved later on has been pretty odd to say the least so let's just read the story kim kardashian and kanye west are getting divorced she's done it says the following um, kim kardashian and kanye west are over multiple sources tell page six that the divorce is imminent for the hollywood couple with the Kardashians hiring a divorce attorney was to the stars of laura wesser um they are keeping it low-key out of uh, but they are done says a source kim has hired laura wesser and they are in settlement talks and the thing that's interesting about it is that i guess more time than not if this hap if this is sort of being spoken about in this way about the Kardashians, they're very quick to sort of like quell rumors that aren't true. Um, they'll put out a press release, Kim will go on the Instagram stories and write in really small font about something and clear up the rumors. But they're very quick to sort of you know squash things because they've got contacts in you know in most of the big platforms, um, blog spaces and news outlets that they can kind of go to to kind of put out the official words. So the fact that there's been complete silence for the best part of what twenty four hours leads you to believe there's just probably some truth to this. It, it, maybe they're not divorcing they might be in counseling but it definitely is a little bit of a separation going on in the family um and if you and if you've been keeping an eye on his movements via the you know ktt forum and stuff you'll know that he hasn't really been around his family for a while he's kind of popped in and popped out but most of the time he's been spending it in his wyoming march in his wyoming ranch sorry so it does kind of lead you to believe that this is possibly happening and it continues anyway says kim 40 hasn't been seen wearing a wedding ring and kanye 43 remained at his 40 million one in miami ranch of the holidays instead of spending it with the collection family who drew criticisms for those extravagant celebrations um kim got kanye out of there um wyoming so they could live separately and quietly and get things sorted out and separate and divorce she's done he said um sources continued and of course a picture of them at the met gala looking gorgeous as well source added that while kim has done much in the past to protect and help kanye deal with with his mental health struggles now this divorce is happening because kim has grown up a lot okay so they're, they're basically pointing out that, that she's the one that decided to call it quits um which is funny because i remember he put out didn't he put out a tweet earlier on like during his whole like weird freak out stage where he sort of said he would have wanted to divorce kim ages ago himself or something like which is some of the stuff he said about his family in public has just been insane proper um bdp energy he continues um she's um serious about taking the bar exam becoming a lawyer she is serious about her prison reform campaign meanwhile kanye is talking about running for president saying i have a crazy s and she just had enough meanwhile separate sources like kanye who's become increasingly uncomfortable and irritated by the connections over the top reality tv star lives is completely over 
over the entire family he wants to nothing to do with them adding he eventually found their reality show unbearable which is definitely you can understand from a Kanye point of view uh, it's always kind of rubbed me up the wrong way I, I'm not really into the whole like getting into a relationship with somebody and try and change something so I think you know if you marry into the connections you know exactly what they're marrying into which is why I'm kind of a bit of, I'm a fan of them and not a fan of them in that regard because they're not pretending to be anything else other than what they are they're exactly what they say on the tin so the moment you engage this family you know sooner rather down the line something's going to happen they're going to rat you out they're going to leak stories about you to the press but you're also going to enjoy you know um, the, the ability to maybe change the fortunes of your family for generations and generations to come they obviously provide a great platform they're quite vain all this sort of stuff whatever it may be but you know exactly what you're getting yourself into so the fact that he was courting her for so long you know they share that amazing story about how long Kanye has fancied Kim behind the scenes all these sort of amazing things for him to just turn around and say hey I don't want you to do the show I don't want you to do this you're wearing to your it's clothing is too skimpy I always found that a little bit manipulative and controlling especially with them because it's not like he was he's marrying a church girl that suddenly you know got her wings and felt confident in her own body she's been this person from minute zero so i've always found that a little bit odd but again maybe a marriage you're meant to compromise somewhat who knows it continues Kanye West tweeted in july Oh yeah, this is what he said. I've been trying to get divorced from Kim um, since Kim met Meek at the Waldorf pick for the prison reform, seeming to refer to the criminal justice summit attended by Kim and rapper Meek Mill. He also, has, and again, does that have him saying that he might, she might have fucked him? I don't know. Um, Kim also called manager, manager, sorry, Chris Jenner, uh, Chris Jong Un, which is probably one of the best niggas I've ever heard. Um, amazing, and claimed that the clashes were trying to force him to the psychiatric treatment. The Kanye um, reluctantly showed up to Kim's um, ridiculous, extravagant one million plus 40th birthday party in Tahiti um, that, uh, for last October for one day. So the following, he showed up and left early. He wouldn't appear in any of the Instagram shots. And he did was bring um, a hologram of the father of a connection and then got out of there as fast as he could. The source said the biggest sticking point in the Kimia divorce settlement talks could be over the Calabasas California family home, which underwent a total redesign must by and Kanye and was also heralded by architecture to suggest as an OA superiority in light. The couple worked on the work all white minimalist home in Belgian designer Alex Verdeville. They reportedly paid 40 million for the house and spent 20 million on renovations. The source says Kim is trying to get Kanye to turn over Kabat's house to her because that's where the kids are based and growing up. That's at home. Explaining she owns all the land and adjoining lots around the home, but Kanye owns the actual home. The source added that the advanced settlement talks this isn't the first time they've been talking about a split, but it's time it's way, way more serious. So obviously something's afoot there and something's happening. But then the interesting part of it, right? Oh, Kanye's got that good um visvim what you call it quilted flannel on. It's the the really, really odd part of it is this. So this is courtesy of um let me see this is trying to get this up here. This is courtesy of It's on site, right? And they've got this flipping insane video up of this guy that's basically summarizing what's basically happened with Kim and Kanye. And there's another really strange part of the story that kind of throws it all off where supposed to be allegedly um the reason why they're splitting is because Kim's uh Kanye's extramarital affair with none other than Jeffrey fucking Starr. Again, I don't know if this is true. It could be completely false, but this is absolutely insane. What a wild, wild story. So let me, let's play this video here from It's On Site. Let's hear this kid kind of run up some of the information. West Gina on Kim Kardashian with Jeffree Star. This rumor has people shook on social media right now. Let's talk about it. So this rumor starts with the fact that Kanye has been living exclusively at him and Kim's Wyoming ranch for the last month while their divorce plays out peacefully, which is what they wanted for their kids. He also spent a lot of time there with his friends over the summer while all of his election stuff was going on. Here comes in this viral TikTok with this girl sharing that she has exclusive information about Kanye's infidelity. Nope. This whole divorce comes as no surprise. Kanye's been hooking up with a very famous beauty guru. Male! beauty guru a lot of people in the scene have known for a while continuing we all know kanye west has been at his ranch over the summer in the last month but guess what other beauty guru announced he was moving to wyoming in august and now lives there jeffree star ava louise said that her friend is a great lawyer and met with kim over the summer apparently kim gave the unnamed lawyer all the evidence that kanye was cheating on her with jeffree star and was planning to file for divorce also if kanye was hooking up with a male beauty guru him and jeffree live in the same gated community and now both happen to live in wyoming these are unconfirmed rumors did kanye how insane is that how insane and again it's not really in important who the person is that he's probably allegedly being involved in all that sort of nonsense because we don't know 
but it's the fact that this is even being entertained the fact that it, it even makes any much any bit of sense just because they happen to live next door to each other says a lot about how far Kim Card, I mean, sorry, Kanye West's star has fallen over the years. He's not the guy we all fell in love with, um, you know, back in the day, maybe a few years ago, even. He's a completely different person, and so much so that he's gotten himself involved in or allowed his name to be attached with next to people that he should have no business, they should have no business even being in the same room as. Um, it's really, really insane absolutely absolutely insane now, again it could be complete bullshit it could just be that they you know decide to call it quits because they've grown apart or they've got different goals and they're doing different things whatever it may be and it might have nothing to do with him whatsoever but just the mere fact that this is even being discussed is just ugh. Yeah, what, what what a way to how far his star has fallen over the years how far his star has fallen no pun intended and then of course in true trolley fashion um jeffrey star decided to upload this picture kind of taking advantage of the entire situation um on the following it's got a picture of him uh with obviously the it looks like i'm gonna say hair dyed in the sort of lgbt colors sort of style and the caption says i'm ready for sunday service like what a way to end an absolutely crazy story and again i don't think I, I i don't think i don't know if it's true who knows you know what i mean celebrities are odd you know it could be it could be true it could be not true it doesn't necessarily matter it's just the fact that this story has even got legs and people are actually believing it says a lot about kanye's current situation and in general like people are, uh, people are saying now at the moment oh yeah this means he's gonna create a best his best album to date what makes you think that the best verse I've heard of Kanye so far has been his feature on the Khan, on what the Playboy Carti album. And that wasn't even that great, right? That's the best thing I've heard from him in a while. That and maybe Kids See Ghost. Kanye is probably not ever going to reach the heights of My Beautiful Dark Twisted Fantasy ever again because he's just too rich. He's got too many things that he's kind of preoccupied with outside of music. And it makes complete sense. No one that makes the Yeezy 700s or the Yeezy Boost 350s or whatever else he does with the Yeezy line to that level of kind of expertise and genius is going to be able to somehow take that same level, that same creative spark and apply it to music because all of his energies, all of his resources are being directed at fashion, at building an infrastructure, building a, you know, building a corporation, um, um, you know, redesigning athletic wear, uh, retail, obviously with the Yeezy and Gap thing that he's doing, merchandising, that he's kind of all that, cre all that sort of, brilliance that we are seeing in the shoes that's what should have been applied to the music but it's never going to happen because music's like you know it's taking a back seat to everything else he's doing so this idea that somehow because he's breaking up with kim and he's going to be now single that he's going to create some of his best work because it's going to be coming from a point of heartbreak similar to 808s and heartbreak is very very naive and short-sighted well, i've not seen anything from kanye musically in the last few years to give me any hope that he's going to ever going to be the artist we knew and love and again as a person he's just completely changed he's evolved he's kind of grown up he's got different experiences he's amassed an, am an amount of wealth that for probably somebody like Kanye with his sort of like narcissistic brain is the worst thing for him personally because no one can legitimately tell him shit you know he's got that song no one can tell me nothing no one can tell Kanye anything and this is probably the dangerous it's probably it's more dangerous for him than anybody else because there's no one to kind of pull him to a side let him know to you know to kind of maybe take this or maybe offer some suggestions he can just kind of steamroll through things surround himself with yes men not ever be accountable to anybody and just keep giving the fans subpar after subpar after subpar work and again I'm, I'm over it man there's a lot more artists out there i can go and support i don't need to kind of keep subjecting myself to this bullshit so i'd much rather just listen to the people that i want to listen to and maybe hold the memory of kanye that i have in my head without subjecting myself to all the other new shit he's putting out there so again who knows it's all alleged it could be true it could not be true but it's just sad to see how far his star has fallen he's gone from being a loving family man you know to speaking so highly about his wife at every turn you know wanting to you know um build a big family for the jump right they've got four kids straight out of the block they didn't ramp around he even spoke about having more kids and then now suddenly he's embroiled in this messy divorce um with one of the messiest people on social media and jeffrey star allegedly it's just a complete an utter horror show and hopefully they work it out if not say la vie say la vie 
Anyway, that's the Excellent Singer Show, episode number 419. Thanks so much for tuning in. As per usual, it's been a pleasure to have your company. If it's your first time tuning to the show, please make sure you smash that like button, hit subscribe, and even comment down below. If you're listening via the podcast app, please download and share. That would be great. And obviously, a five star review. And of course, you can support the show via Patreon on the link down below too. It's patreon.com for Jack Agostino. I'm going to be uploading one bonus episode on Patreon for my Patreon fans. So definitely make sure you jump on there for a little. It's $1, one pound per month. Agostino. That's patreon.com for us a-g-o-s-t-i-n-h-o jump on get involved don't delay get on there today until next time see you very soon take care peace